Getting a master's degree in computer science without a CS background is quite common and achievable, but there are certain things you need to know before you apply. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Will. I'm an engineering manager and online master's degree student. And on this channel, I share my experiences with online learning and my career growth as a software developer. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can get a master's degree in computer science without a previous CS degree. First thing, do you really need a master's in CS? Before I get into how to start the process of applying to a CS master's degree program, you'll need to know if this is an appropriate fit for your specific situation. A master's degree in CS is usually a mechanism for experienced professionals with technical jobs, typically something in the software, math, or engineering fields. If you currently have a non-technical job and do not have a technical four-year degree, it is unlikely that a master's degree in computer science will open many doors for you, since you'll be missing a lot of professional experience that a lot of jobs are looking for. To be completely honest as well, it's not very likely that you get accepted into a master's degree in computer science program. If this is you, stick around a bit longer and I'll talk about some alternatives to learn the same skills, but just without the master's of CS credential. If you come from a technical career or background and are looking to further acquire skills to further advance your existing career path or jump into a different technical career track, odds are a master's in CS is a good option for you. A master's in CS offers you a quality credential and marketable skills to add to your existing professional experience to enable a career change. Now that we have this housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about available alternatives and how to apply to these programs. All right, first let's talk about knowing your options for learning computer science. Don't take the examples I provide next as me trying to convince you that you shouldn't pursue a master's degree in CS, but I do want to point out that the internet and the current state of education allows a variety of avenues to learn valuable skills. Some of these options are also great for individuals who have low odds of being accepted into a master's program and just want to test the waters before committing time and money into a larger program. Online computer science learning falls into these four general categories. First, you're going to have free online courses. Here you have options like YouTube, Coursera, Free Code Camp. These are great places to get experience without any long-term commitment. Second, you're going to have subscription learning platforms. This is where you get into services like Pluralsight, Skillshare, and DataCamp. These platforms are generally reasonably priced and have good structure and instructors. Next, we have grad certificates. Graduate certificates are generally a smaller curriculum of courses designed to gain mastery in a very focused skill, like C-sharp programming, for example. They're typically offered by the distance learning arms of large universities. They range in time and money commitment, but are less than a full master's degree. And lastly, we have the master's degree in computer science. A master's degree in computer science will be the most difficult entrance requirements and the biggest commitment on your time and money. They also have the most structured and curated learning path for their students. Since you're watching this video, I assume you're interested in learning more about the CS master's degree option. So from here on out in this video, that's the only option I will cover. Next, let's talk about getting accepted and finding any gaps. Since you do not have a computer science undergrad, you'll have gaps you need to fill with either education or professional experience. Each CS master's degree program will have their own admission requirements, but for the most part, the main requirement is to have a four-year degree with a reasonable GPA like 3.0 or better. If you pass that requirement, it's feasible for you to get accepted in one of the programs. But depending on your background, you may have a lot of gaps to fill or none. Now let's talk about your undergraduate degree and your coursework. Your undergraduate degree plays the biggest role in determining what gaps you'll need to fill in order to get accepted into a CS program. If you have a degree in a field like mathematics, electrical engineering, or computer engineering, or something similar, you are likely in good shape, especially if you completed four credit college coursework in the following areas of study. Object-oriented programming, data structures, algorithms, linear algebra, and statistics and probability. For example, I have an electrical engineering background and a previous master's degree in financial mathematics. So I had taken college level credits in object-oriented programming, linear algebra, and statistics. So my biggest gap was in data structures and algorithms. My options were to take a free course offered through the program and pass an entrance exam, or go take a college level data structures and algorithms course. If your previous college course load checked all the boxes, then it's very possible you have no gaps to fill. If you came from a science or math background, it's very possible that you'll need to acquire more programming and algorithms coursework before gaining admittance into one of the CS programs. Next, let's talk about working experience. Another option you have to fill any coursework gaps is relevant professional experience. Say, for example, you've been working for years as a software developer but your undergrad is mechanical engineering, it's very likely that you can use your experience to meet object-oriented programming requirement. It's definitely a harder sell than having one-for-one -one coursework requirements filled. So if you wish to use working experience to fill gaps, you'll have to do a good job in explaining how your work meets the desired areas of experience. It'll probably need letters of recommendation to vouch for you in those areas as well. Just go into the application process knowing you may not be able to get to the next available cohort since you do not come from a CS background and potentially may need to spend months or years filling the knowledge gaps. 
In my case, I needed to delay a semester cord to fulfill my missing data structures and algorithms requirement. If you have a four-year degree with a reasonable graduation GPA, getting a master's degree in computer science is well within reach, but your background and professional journey will dictate the speed of your admission into the program. You'll need to decide if you're willing to commit to filling any gaps that the CS program finds. If you're ready to start looking at schools to apply to, check out my video on applying to CS master's degree programs. See you in there.